It has been a century since the Dark Alchemist drained the Elemental Guardians of their power. There's nothing desperately wrong with Torchlight 3, which just came out in early access form a week ago. It's a flashy, bombastic, nicely paced action RPG with tons of enemies to slash, blast, and explode for the tasty loot inside. The problem is that it doesn't really do much to effectively set itself above or apart from the embarrassment of riches we have to pick from in this genre right now. When I could be playing Diablo 3 or Wolsen or Path of Exile or even one of the older Torchlight games, I keep looking for a reason why I'd choose Torchlight 3, and so far the early access version hasn't really given me one. Torchlight 3 doesn't put its best foot forward as it tries to introduce us to a story premise that isn't really trying to be anything more than ultra-generic fantasy. Something about an ancient evil reawakening, blah blah blah... Ugh, sorry, I might have dozed off for a second there. It's not like the previous Torchlight games were heavy on story either, but Torchlight 3 doesn't even seem to be trying. Currently, Torchlight 3 has the first two of three planned acts available, which took me a little less than 20 hours to complete. There's also going to be some kind of endgame mode that's not implemented yet. You can tackle what little there is with a group of four though, and I found the network side of things to be very stable and easy to use. At least things get a little more interesting when it comes to the class design. Each of the four playable classes has a very distinct and flavorful aesthetic and identity. The weird and eerie Dusk Mage builds up dark mana by using light spells, and light mana by using dark spells, and can unleash a more powerful finisher of either type once the appropriate mana gauge is filled. The hilariously over-the-top Railmaster reimagines the concept of a pet class by summoning a battle train that follows you around on rails you leave behind as you move, to which more cars with different uses can be added by investing in the appropriate skill tree. Not all of them are quite as fun in practice as they seem in concept, though. The Sharpshooter, for instance, is a savvy hunter who can summon various companions and has a whole tool belt of powerful ranged attacks. That sounds great, but their ammo resource gauge is basically just a fancy stamina bar that recharges quickly when not in use. There is an unlockable reload skill that refills your ammo instantly, and while it suits the fantasy the sharpshooter is trying to represent, it was far too rare that it let me feel like I was making interesting resource management decisions. The options for customizing these classes are a little bit lackluster too, especially compared to some other recent ARPGs. Each has two main skill trees with a different focus. The Sharpshooter has one focusing on direct range damage and one focusing on summonable creatures, while the Railmaster has one focused on melee combat and one focused on making his train bigger and nastier. But each only features a handful of abilities to invest in right now and since they're gated at 5 level intervals, the number of choices you actually have upon leveling up is usually pretty limited. It gets a little more interesting with the introduction of relics, which ended up being my favorite part of the progression system. You can have one relic equipped at a time, which opens up an entirely new skill tree that includes an ultimate ability with a very long cooldown, similar to those you might see in a MOBA. Each relic is class agnostic, so you can mix and match them to create interesting combinations. A sniper with lightning powers? Sure. A mage with vampiric berserker abilities? Nothing's stopping you. The relic trees still feel fairly limited, just like the base class ones, but they encourage experimentation and help my builds feel like they're really mine. The enemy design is respectable, but doesn't offer much that's new and exciting if you've been around the ARPG block a few times. Just like in previous Torchlight games, there are powerful elite creatures with randomized ability modifiers that mix things up, as well as legendary and mini-boss bruisers packed with rare loot for your trouble. The bigger area and act bosses are a highlight, offering substantial challenges and keeping me on my toes with deadly area attacks. Playing on hard, the difficulty felt just about right.
The most frustrating part of Torchlight 3's combat, which I still haven't stopped fuming over, is the fact that almost none of the active abilities can be triggered unless you've come to a complete stop. It means you have to finish any ongoing animations and wait around a second, which may as well be a decade in some of these encounters. It just feels clunky and irritating. Probably the most distinctive and promising feature in Torchlight 3 is a player housing system that lets you decorate a personal fort, enchant your gear, house collectible pets, and sacrifice items to various altars to unlock permanent stat bonuses. There are tons of cosmetic and functional structures to unlock and craft, and I like being able to return from a cave full of death spiders to a space that feels like my own. Decorating the courtyard is a nice change of pace from fighting for your life after all. This is where Torchlight 3 feels the most innovative, and I'd love to see this aspect developed further before it launches out of early access. Can you handle this? Torchlight 3's current early access incarnation is a fast food combo meal of an ARPG. In almost every respect, it's acceptable. It's fine. It's just not revolutionary or memorable or even especially fun compared to its competition. And maybe as it progresses towards its final form, things will shape up and some diamonds will start to emerge from the rough. But for now, I'd have a hard time recommending it to anyone who might be drawn in by its attractive and distinct look and attitude. You won't find much substance to back it up, and there are so many better options to get your dungeon crawling, loot inhaling fix. For more action RPG reviews, check out what we thought of Desperados 3 and Maneater. And for everything else, stick with IGN.